Good morning and good afternoon. My name is Dagu Jerele. I am a regional director with the Challenge TB project in Ethiopia. I'll be talking about the TB, HIV, and diabetes integration project, which is a pilot project implemented in four regions of Ethiopia. So diabetes mellitus is a significant contributor to the burden of chronic diseases, and we are expecting that the number of people living with diabetes will increase dramatically by 2030. And it's estimated that there will be about 400 million with diabetes mellitus globally. Mellitus globally. And about 30% of these people will be low and, in low- and middle-income countries. Di diabetes mellitus and tuberculosis, they share some important common risk factors, uh, including uh, some peculiar characteristics related with the symptoms. Uh, for example, uh, diabetes, diabetic patients with tuberculosis are often asymptomatic, and they have atypical presentations and poorer treatment outcomes. So as a result, we usually miss them in the health system, any patient, any diabetic patient with tuberculosis can be missed unless we do some active searching. This also affects the treatment outcome, both in patients with diabetes and in tuberculosis patients. There is also some evidence which suggests that there is interaction between HIV infection and diabetes mellitus comorbidity, but this area of evidence is still weak and there is a lot of uh, debate and discussion going on globally. The objective of this project, the pilot project that we implemented in Ethiopia, was to demonstrate the feasibility of implementing an integrated approach for chronic diseases and infectious diseases, with the ultimate goal of scaling up the integrated service delivery model, both for tuberculosis and diabetes mellitus. So we started with, small, with a small fund from Management Science for Health, which is called an inch fund. Uh, using that money, we supplied essential materials for diabetes clinics, including a glucometer, lancet, and alcohol swabs. We also distributed existing guidelines and SOPs for the TBHIV integration activities. Based on those uh, inputs, we developed a package of on-site orientation materials for clinicians working the TB and diabetes and HIV clinics. We also had uh, support from the regional health bureaus and the hospitals at the time of the implementation of this project. So they assigned focal persons, both at the regional health bureau and the hospitals. They also endorsed the proposed activity as part of their routine work in the selected hospitals. The project then started by sensitizing the hospital administration about the need for integrated services. And this was followed by training of the health workers on the specific screening approach. Then we continued with our support by providing regular supervision and mentoring. During these visits, we also collected information and analyzed the data for a generation of evidence. So the trained health workers, they did the screening in each of the three clinics. In the diabetic clinic, the screening was done only for TB because there was no clear justification to do HIV testing among diabetic patients because there is no strong evidence to support this. In the HIV clinics, we did screening both for the diabetes mellitus and tuberculosis. And in the TB clinics, patients were screened for diabetes mellitus and HIV. The regional focal persons actively contributed to this effort. Uh, they participated in the joint consultative meeting. They also monitor the progress of the project jointly with, with the project team. So this implementation uh, happened in uh, four hospitals in Amara and Oromia region. These are the two largest regions in Ethiopia out of 11. At the time of this project implementation, we were also uh, implementing a large USID funded project called Hill TV. So we used the opportunity to embed this activity within uh, the ongoing uh, broader support. Uh, during that period. So TB screening was done using a symptom-based screening approach, which is a commonly used approach, which was followed by a diagnostic test, mainly microscopy. We didn't have adequate infrastructure to do a gene expert at the time of this implementation, and also there was limited experience with using gene experts as a primary test at the time of this implementation. HIV screening and testing was done according to the national guidelines, so we used uh, rapid test kits to confirm HIV diagnosis. 
The diabetes mellitus screening was uh, a bit more complicated because we didn't have any proven tools at that time. So we used both a risk scoring system, which was adopted from the published literature, and a symptom-based screening, which was developed by our team. Diagnosis of diabetes mellitus was confirmed by three efforts. The first one is a fasting blood sugar with a cutoff point of 126 milligram per deciliter in TB patients. We use a fasting blood sugar in TB patients because these patients come early in the morning without taking any food, so we use that opportunity. For the HIV patients, we use a random blood sugar because there is no such a guideline for them to come without having food. And we also took uh, having a known diabetic status as the confirmation of uh, diabetes mellitus. So this is an example of uh, the diabetes risk scoring is an example of the, some of the tools that we use, uh, developed and used there. It had uh, components including family history of diabetes mellitus, uh, yes or no, age group into three bands, uh, hypertension, yes or no. Uh, we also had uh, taken waist circumference uh, at different cutoff points both uh, for men and women. A current smoking as uh, never or a smoker or current smoker and the use of alcohol where the criteria used uh, to make a composite index of a total score. So any patient with a cutoff point of five or more uh, with a total score of five or more was categorized as a high risk patient. We had some challenge during the implementation uh, expectedly and some of the challenges include the service setup at the diabetic clinic was more complicated and the symptom based screening that we wanted to use among diabetic patients was not a, an efficient method to detect tuberculosis so we suggested to use chest x-ray as an initial diagnostic tool but this was never implemented uh, during the pilot period because of uh, also a shortage of resources at that time. There was also no organized clinic for diabetes mellitus, as these patients are treated everywhere. So we distributed the registers into several clinics in order to organize the services. And recording and reporting were also lacking in the, the diabetes clinic, so we suggested to prepare a separate reporting and recording tools for, for TB diabetes uh, patients. In the HIV and TB clinics, uh, the challenges were slightly different. In the there was no proven screening tool for diabetes mellitus. That was the main challenge. So we used you know, both symptom-based and uh, risk scoring system uh, until we, ha you know, we have a more validated tool for diabetes screening. In the ART clinic, the main challenge was the workload. So we engaged nurses and other supporters to do the screening because the physicians were often busy with more complicated and other commitments. We also shortened the questionnaire in order to allow more time to screen more patients. So the results are summarized here. and We screened nearly 900 patients in the diabetes clinics and the TB prevalence was about 0.7%, which is about 3.5 times the national prevalence estimate for Ethiopia at the time of this pilot project. In the TB clinics, we had a smaller number of patients, but the Proportion of patients with high fasting plasma glucose levels were 32%, and co-infection with HIV was about 12.5%. In the HIV clinic, we had more than 2,000 patients screened, but the proportion of patients with high uh, plasma glucose uh, were very small at 1.5%. And co-infection with TB was 15.8%. So in summary, uh, this is uh, one of the earliest or the first experience uh, in, in implementing integrated screening for TB, diabetes, and HIV. Uh, we think that this approach could be feasible in settings with uh, dual burden of both communicable and non-communicable diseases. If we scale up this kind of uh, approach, it may serve as entry point, not only for identifying tuberculosis, but also to identify and manage uh, diabetes, mellitus, and other, other chronic diseases. We also recommend further studies, uh, the implementation experience, in order to identify best screening algorithms and treatment outcomes in patients with comorbid conditions. There is a, a paper published on this topic, and uh, the readers are advised to refer to this link. It's published in the International Health, and uh, it's also freely accessible. Thank you very much.